next, we have the keynote panel, right? Adapting to survive. How can miners integrate effective digital strategy into the operations? How can they operationalize the digital strategy? I'll be moderating this panel. I'm Max Nelson. I'm the global mining leader for IBM. And with that, I now invite the panel members on stage. Thank you. We have a great panel lined up here today. Uh, this is quite interesting uh, because of the uh, background uh, and the diversity of thoughts and experience that they're going to bring in our conversation today. Um, let me first introduce uh, Gargi Mishra. Uh, Gargi has two decades of mining experience. She's a principal consultant at uh, Hatch, uh, responsible on the theme of digital transformation. Also notably, Gargi has been awarded Global Inspirational Women in Mining uh, back in 2018. With that, can I, Gargi, ask you to add a bit more about your experience, about what you do? So good morning, everyone. Uh, we are sitting here and talk about future of mining. And I saw this quote few years back, not few years, uh, around a year back, and it stuck with me. And it says, future is already here. It's not equally distributed. And I think it's very true for mining. And my passion and my experience helps my mining clients to bring that future today, make our mining much, much safer, and ready for workforce of future than thinking about what happening to future workforce by doing digital roadmap for the clients. Thank you. Uh, Nesta Alleman. Uh, Nesta has been with Kinross Mining for close to a decade. Um, he's been successfully executing technology projects for the mining business. Uh, also, Nesta, can I ask you to share a few lines from your bio? Thank you, Max. Uh, hello, everybody, again. Um, so my background is telecommunication engineering and IT. So I've been working for different industries like science or oceanographic or microelectronics and then I fall into the mining industry. So at the beginning I was pretty much engineering technical part and then I was transforming or translating into more product management. So yeah, my, my deal is just to manage all these IT technological digitalization projects applied on mining or any other industry. So that's all. Thank you. Um, Declan walked. Uh, Declan comes from the academia. He has 25 years of experience uh, in mining technology development and innovation space. Uh, yes, Declan, uh, could you also lend some color to what I said? Thanks, Max. Uh, my name's Declan Vogt. I'm a uh, Originally an electronics engineer by background, I, I spent m most of my career working for a research company in South Africa, trying to innovate, trying to introduce new technology into mining, and uh, as I moved that path, I realized that the implementation was the big issue and the difficult issue, and it, and it still remains so. Uh, I've latterly moved into academia, and I'm now at the Camborne School of Mines and uh, looking at robotics and automated mining. Thank you. Right. Um, so before we get started with the panel questions, I thought it would be worthwhile to uh, set, set the context. Right? Most of you are from the mining industry. But nevertheless, um, I'd like to reemphasize that mining industry has been around for centuries. And according to World Economic Forum, mining and metals industry is worth $1.8 trillion. Majority of the mining companies still adopt traditional and manual processes. They use legacy technology. Um, and they're also faced with uh, the problem of decline in the quality of uh, the deposits, such as decrease in ore grades. Now, it is also important to be aware that the easily attainable cost and uh, productivity savings are harder to obtain. So therefore, global policies and industry practices must change, must evolve to adopt digital technologies, right? Uh, digital technologies for maximum efficiency, minimum environmental damage, uh, and, and also provide greater public and private cooperation that leads to creation of broader industry ecosystems, right? The, Business of mining is, is very, very complex. There's a lot of pressure, both internal and external, 
as mining managers, some of you know that uh, you know mine managers are faced with the pressure of continually improving efficiency, improving efficiency across right across the value chain. Um, they also have to maintain acceptable returns on capital employed. Um, they have to constantly monitor and manage their production, their logistics, their maintenance, the life cycle cost, and so on. And technology is rapidly developing. They are rapidly developing. They are running away from us. We now have things like predictive component failure detection. We have augmented reality. We have virtual reality. We have data lakes. We have uh, robotics now. To add to this, we talk about uh, cognitive computing, AI, blockchain, uh, all this in the mining industry. And that is the reason why having the right digital partner is vital to deliver your digital strategy. Essentially, removing uncertainty, uh, closing the gaps, and leading your projects to to outcomes with better integration of data between systems, equipment, people, and processes. So let's get the questions kick-started uh, with our panel. Um, and what I'd like to ask uh, Nestor and probably Declan as well is, how does one manage digitalization when parts of the mining organization are so different? Nestor, can I start with you? Yeah, um, I think the key point or the key word is interoperability. What, um, under my experience, what is happening is that uh, we have different systems in different departments, and they are not communicating each other in a proper way. Maybe communication protocols are not the same ones. Uh, we had a hard time, the IT department, to make them work together because we, in general speaking, we are not involved in the early stage of the innovation strategy. So they are just purchasing software and hardware, and there are probably not a guideline or a, a strategic point of view in order to, to see what you really want to have your mind in, a, in, you know, in two years. So I think uh, the key point is, sorry, about I'm from IT, so I have to, I have to say it, but uh, I think we have to involve IT in the core board of decisions about the strategy of innovation. Uh, even, for instance, just a simple example, but when you make an RFP and request for proposals to get with, to see which system will, will which vendor will, you will decide, IT should be involved there. Because maybe one of the, the key decisions is the kind if their, if their system is compatible with our with the, with the infrastructure, infrastructure you have. So, so basically, we, I could say we, have, we need to have a holistic view of the mine, which is not happening now. So the mine, your mine is a single item, a single thing that you have to operate all together. In, we, we don't have in the mining industry, like other industries like oil and gas or aerospace, we don't have standards, we don't have governance. So we need to get a common uh, you know, interoperability systems and avoid all the issues we are having now with this kind of silos way of systems running together in a not optimal way. We're not getting the most out of everything. We don't, if we don't get the data intercommunicated, we are not getting the most of every part of the systems. So basically interoperability and holistic view of the mine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Declan, your comments and thoughts on this? I think digitization is, is a change, um, and the, the magnitude of that change depends on where you sit in the mining chain and where you are in the company and how it's going to affect you personally, but I think because it's a change, it's got to be managed through a, a change management process, and that needs to be understood up front. So each introduction of an iPad into a workplace needs to have a change process introduction of a major integrated system needs to have an associated change work process. I think it's, uh, uh, miners are resistant to change, but there are well uh, established methods for um, facilitating change in organizations, and I think we, it's very important to remember that. Yeah, um, absolutely, right, change, change is essential, and managing that change is the key to success of um, some of these digital transformation projects. Now, um, what I've seen in my global role based out of Boston, um, you know, I, I used to be with IBM in, in Australia. I've uh, 
worked in many parts of the Middle East, in Asia, and right now uh, doing a global role for mining um, in IBM out of, uh, out of the US. What I've seen is every mining company, big or small, tier one or tier two, has a strategy. A strategy that's either created, well thought through by a top-notch strategy firm, or it has been created in-house. Now the question that most of the CEOs and the C execs have is, how do we take this digital strategy and operationalize it? Um, and not simply end, do random acts of digital, uh, end with a POC or a pilot that has never scaled beyond the digital experiment, as I call it. So, um, Gargi, I'd like to invite you to um, you know, share your experience on this. How do you take a digital strategy and operationalize it? Yeah. So, if we see most of the mining companies are stuck with loads of POCs, and they don't really get their digital dividend because you, it's just become a cost or a nice exercise to have. But some of the champions, I call them, those who actually can have a POC and a scalable solution at the end, they follow a very different approach than most of the companies, they don't, those who don't. And it's having a well-defined digital strategy roadmap, either with some of the strategy company or within your organization. I always say it's always good to have a partner who is outsider because then you, you can solve, especially when the people says mining managers and mining people are very stubborn people. And when you co-create with another partner, you get dialogue open up and people get open for the new ideas. And then when you design a strategy, it's, it's boiled down to very small basic thing. When you is, is scoping your POC, are you thinking about scalability? Are you thinking about your infrastructure? And then are you thinking about user buy-in? So it's just well-defining, taking your system, people, and process, and then driving that journey, starting in an agile way, launch MVP, prove it, scale it, iterate it. Just like any other industry, other industries, not just mining, do that. A startup model, we call it, and then you roll it out with, again, involving people and process. A technology solution, a standalone, is never an answer, and it never been. And good part I'm seeing in mining industry now is we drifting away, and now everybody understand that people and process are important, and most of the champions rolling out project that way, they're running an agile, and design thinking is a core to get the user buy-in, because it's a very nice example. A few years back, I was running a startup, and we have this safety app, and we have the best feature, which was perfect for the urban user. But then when you take it to a mine, miner wears heavy gloves. They were not designed for user. But then when we have user workshop, they were suggested, no, we don't need this drop down button. Give me yes or no tick down. It's a small, small things, but that's where user buy in lying in. And I strongly believe a, a POC or any digital initiative in mine should be driven by top leadership uh, in the sense that they have uh, willingness to spend time and money from their people, but it should be actually driven by the leaders at the bottom who are the day-to-day -day user. And those companies, when they're doing it successfully, it's very well rolling out. We still have a POC pit where all the money goes and never see any digital dividend, but I'm sure in a few months' time or year time, we will see the change because people are adopting too. Oh, that's, that's good. Um, Declan, from, from your perspective, uh, what are your feedback? On, on, the, on the pilots and you know, the, uh, the key to scale these pilots. I think that this is a massive challenge. I think it shouldn't be underestimated. Other industries have really struggled with changing their operations. It needs to be carefully thought through and managed. I think one of the problems is the pilot. You have to have successful pilots. So you need to choose your area carefully, decide what you want to do carefully, show benefits, all of these good things. But invariably, pilot sites are good sites. They have good people. And when you start to roll it beyond the pilot into, let me say, average sites, things don't work out quite the same way. So, you know, I think there are... In the literature, there are some proven techniques for adopting new technology. I think the mining industry are employing some of them. I mean, one is that new technology works best in a new environment, and we saw that yesterday in the, 
in the talk from uh, the mine in Mali. Um, it's going to be a big challenge, and I don't think it should be underestimated. I think, um, you know, just reiterate what Gargi and Declan said. Um, executive sponsorship is, is key uh, in any of these projects to scale, and also selecting the right use case, selecting the right mind site for a pilot to show that early success um, is significantly important. Um, and at the same time, the overarching strategy of think big, start small, and scale rapidly is, is what I'm seeing with mining companies all around the world. Um, now with that, uh, moving on, can we talk about how does the operating model of the organization change as a result of this digital adoption and implementing digital transformation projects? Uh, Nestor, you want to go? Mm, well, um, what is happening now in terms of some changes is that now the kind, this kind of skills you require to run a mine is changing. Uh, I've been reading or listening the last couple of years that this generation of, let's call it millennials, it will be an issue for mining because uh, millennials kind of, by a stereotype, they would, they, they would like, they won't like to go to minings, to go to remote places and so on. But now with this new kind of changes we are having when we can run mines remotely, and it will be mostly all based on some kind of technology or IT. So I think now it will be a, a, a huge change in terms of um, in, in terms of kind of the kind of people that will be running mines. And on the other hand, I think it will be also a kind of a struggle in some kind of jurisdictions where you have a strong commitment with the country about uh, nationalization and the workforce should be nationals and so on and how this can impact when you make automatization and you, re you have to swift from drivers to kind of IT skilled people to run, to run the, remotely the equipment. So it will be a, a lot of change. And of course, uh, what I've experienced is that a mine is a kind of operation where you can easily waste a lot of money. I see, I've seen in the Sahara, of, in the Sahara millions buried under the ground under the sand just because of wasting parts, wasting lack of inventory management and so on. And as it, as, as, as it is an operation which you can easily waste money, you have a lot of room to save money using digitalization, technology, optimization, and all these new trends. Right. Um, Declan, how about your inputs? I think uh, um, Nestor's picked, on, picked up on some, some good things, and I, and I think I'd kind of like to reiterate that, that the nature of work is going to change. But we heard yesterday that some of the technical aspects of mining, it's going to be easier to find people because an automated rock drill can drill a hole. It doesn't need 10 years of experience. It puts it where you command it to put it. So from that point of view, it might make it easier, particularly if you're employing local people to bring people up to the necessary skills quickly enough. There will be a need for, for IT skills, and that's something we're going to have to get used to and, and have to adapt to. The other thing is that I think that the, in, the work intensity is increasing. We're seeing successively more and more regulation, more need for compliance with regulation. We heard yesterday about the reporting standards. And I think IT has a big role to play in providing that information, making that information available at the fingertips of the people who need it and, and making it available quickly. So I think there's a, a, a lot to be offered. There are a lot of benefits from digitization. It's going to change the nature of, of the kind of work we do, but fundamentally we break rock and move it. Absolutely. I'd also like to add. Sure. Go ahead. So when we're talking about operating model, one point which touches me, and I don't know how many of you have seen Rio Tinto new ad, and it's what future is holding for us. It's about sustainable mining. And Rio Tinto now, when they do an iron ore advertisement, they don't just show their big mine iron ore coming out and melting down and going in a bar. They're actually showing how it touches our life. DBS did that a few years back with engagement ring. And that's where it boils down to user experience. So our operating model 
is not going to be leaving a lot of waste behind and then expecting a millennials to buy your product. It's about having a sustainable mind with zero waste, zero, zero harm to environment and safe people. And that's where I think actual operating model change will come from to drive the millennial buyer to buy your product. Absolutely, right. With as you operationalize your digital strategy and as technology gets more and more adopted in your organization, um, job roles are changing. The, uh, the, uh, the skills and the expertise that mining industry valued five years ago is no more the skills and the expertise that is needed to run an effective mining operational environment moving forward. And this has been reiterated by the CEO of a tier one mining company end of last year at IMAR conference. Right? So job skills are, uh, the, the job roles are changing, job skills uh, that are needed to run the mining business are different. And perhaps to an extent, if, if I um, take it one step further, uh, the mining industry may have to mimic the Silicon Valley moving forward. Um, so the next question that I have is, uh, you know, what are the roadblocks, uh, Gargi, of digital adoption that you've seen in the mining market, in the mining industry? You've been in the mining industry for so many years. You're based out of South Africa. Um, why is it imperative to consider the knock-on effect of digital transformation? And is it essential to plan all these eventualities ahead? Yeah. So I like roadblock word because I see them as opportunity to actually um, improve your mindset. So biggest road, roadblock, which we all agree, is silo mentality, which now pretty much diluting, but we still work in silos. We buy products and systems which not necessarily talk to each other. So lack of integration of the system and process. And then again, user buy-in. But if, if I look back and I see, it actually just boils back to again having a not well-defined digital strategy and not having a user buy-in. But uh, if you thought proper and you start from scoping it right from the day one when having a uh, IT and OT teams working together, then it's actually become a, not a roadblock, but an opportunity to actually look at your data, clean your data, find out where actually you're recording your data. And the most uh, interesting part I have seen is most of the mind will have the most fancy dashboard, but level O and level one data is actually in, still in the paper. So I think that roadblock gives you opportunity when you look at it and map as is what's happening in my system, in my people and my process. And then when you're trying to remove that roadblock, actually you're putting a proper IT governance, people governance. So roadblock is good when it's considered as a opportunity to improve the site. But key one is unstructured data silo mentality and not having integrated platforms in most of the time. Right. Sorry, Max, can, can I? Sure, please. And um, what also, again, under my experience, what I also see as, as a barrier or ob obstacle or something is that traditional mine managers, they, are all, they also think of mining. And they, it's, it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to explain them some kind of new idea or something because they only listen about uh, mine stone. Uh, uh, mind, uh, tons milled, processing uh, ores, uh, you know, and uh, if you get out of the typical, I mean, I understand that, I mean, they have to mine. So uh, sometimes it's uh, hard to explain them or to convince them uh, to, you know, to go ahead with some kind of innovation because uh, they, they don't see at the, at, at, up front the benefits for their mining operations. So the, the Again, change management of people, you know. And if management is old-fashioned, it's a little bit tougher. And, 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 and finally, you, f you show them, as I explained yesterday during my presentation, that in generally speaking, IT costs are much, much cheaper than the rest of the operations in mining. So when you show them the cost of, the, of any project you will propose and the benefit it can create, is, then it gets easier. Right. So we talk about strategies, strategies of business, digital strategy um, that leads into digital transformation projects. Um, should modern day mining business strategies have digital in their heart? And how could this be possible? And could it completely change the core focus of the industry? 
Your thoughts, uh, Nestor? Uh, well, as, as I said in my first intervention, um, uh, and again, I'm from IT, so this is my point of view of everything. Uh, IT, is, IT is out of the core, always. You know, we are these guys in the, in the underground office uh, taking care of Wi-Fi or something like this. And so with the Star Wars t-shirts. Uh, and uh, we have been always, and it's also our fault. Eh? I, IT also have promoted that. It's like, I don't want to be bothered, let, give me, you know. So it's, 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 we are, it's collaboration again. We have to all collaborate. And IT will became a key part of mine or, or any industry in the world. And we have to be in the core of the, of the mine. So we, it's not like mining, processing, exploration, and then IT. Is, and so we have to be in the core. So the, the whole thing will change. And we should be in the center of everything. And then all should, you know, like orbit around uh, IT. I'm sorry, but uh, <laughs> the way it is. So yeah, the, the, the main core should change and, and, and involve in the whole strategy. And as I think you, you mentioned, he mentioned before, it should be a process of innovation. It's, just, it's, it's not just purchasing software and hardware and then saying IT connected. And, and then you realize you, you cannot connect it because it's not compatible and you have to do a lot of work around dirty solutions to make it work. So it, it, have to, it will change. It's, it's, a, it's a huge change. But I think it's an exciting time, especially for IT. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, right, again, um, so I, I'll take the second part of the question um, and I'll share my experience where um, the question is, uh, would it completely change the core focus of the industry? I think uh, the core focus of the mining industry is, is mining, right? Um, and, and the experience uh, that I had uh, with this l one of the largest underground OEM companies, uh, I'm not going to name the company, um, we, IBM is in partnership with them. Um, when I talked to the top leadership of, of that company, four years ago uh, when we started the mining business and when we, we as IBM started focusing on the mining industry, um, the OEM president uh, of the mining business said to us that uh, we're a machine company. The way we make money is by selling more machines and selling more spare parts. We sell more tools, more spares. That's how we make money. But then over the years through the conversation with, with IBM, and creation of a digital office in their organization, they have been able to transform their thinking to more a service-oriented business, right? How can we capture through digital, through digital projects and a digital platform, how, how are we able to capture the data of our machines, right? Of course, the core DNA is, is machines and, and parts. So these machines and parts that are operating, uh, you know, two kilometers under, underground and you know, in different parts of the world, how are they able to capture the data of these machines to be able to provide better service to their clients? So really, this has been the step change in that organization where they have been able to transform into a more services-oriented business, leveraging data and leveraging technologies, right? Um, so, Gargi, the next one um, I think is, is your sweet spot, is uh, with all these digital projects everywhere, what has been the impact or success for some of these digital initiatives that you've been involved in and that you have experience in? So I will start from where you left at how OEM changing their model. And it's actually changed the way business impact we have seen in present time than what was in few years a few months back is uh, precisely having that mindset that this data which I'm collecting is not just for me, it's to share with the mining company or share with the digital initiative. And what happened is when you have an integrated mine plan, planning uh, system in your site or you have a condition-based monitoring or predictive analytics, you actually <laughs> see the change in efficiency. Like somebody just said yesterday that they went in, install a solution, simple solution for dynamic scheduling and they saw that 10% change. And it's not just about efficiency, it's also about making people more safe. And when you have a connected worker, which is connected to your inventory, you manage your finance as well because you know when your machine is going to be fail or which part you need. So you plan ahead, you plan for the worse. And that's what I'm seeing in ground. Those companies where they have integrated planning and scheduling 
and they have uh, integrated systems. They have improved efficiency, uh, less harm, so driving towards the zero harm, which is everybody's goal here, and uh, better people, because they, they can see this person is fatigued or not. So it's all just a small, small initiative yeah. I'm seeing in connected worker, like fatigue monitor. I'm bringing people aspect because machines were we already monitoring them, but these are the aspects we don't talk much about is how a safety app or a fatigue monitor in a system is actually also improving efficiency because you can see where your people actually spending time. Is it a cafeteria or is it a working space? So technology is changing how you um, work, how your work environment affect and how the interrelationship between the people and machine. So, and efficiency of course is the outcome out of that. Nesta, your thoughts on some of the successes of these projects that you've dealt with? Um, what has been the, the outcome or, or the impact uh, to business? Well, uh, just to give you an example, um, uh, in, in our operations in Mauritania, uh, as we don't have any power connection, uh, it's not energized with, the comp with the, any, you know, Infra uh, you know, uh, electrical infrastructure from the city or something because we are in the middle of nowhere. Everything is about burning fuel. Uh, you know, we burn fuel to for 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 the to generate power and to fuel the machinery and everything. So it was a huge consumption of fuel. So basically, we were close to 70 millions of dollars in fuel a year. And we did a project to optimize fuel consumption, and we went down to 40 million a year. So, and the project at the beginning, it was um, they were reluctant to do it because it would it would cost close to two millions to do it, and they were reluctant to do it. They they thought they won't they won't see the the, the return of investment, and then they save 40 million. So, so. This is one example that, uh, that I, again, I, it got barriers. It, it was not clear to do it because it was too expensive or, you know. But at the end of the day, you get the value out of it. Delivering all these projects, delivering, uh, you know, cost efficiency and productivity is the key, right? The, these are the fundamental metrics of any digital transformation project or improving the EBITDA. The CEO says, I want to improve the EBITDA of my organization through a roadmap of digital projects. So Gargi, um, in any organization, there are hundreds and hundreds of use cases. Everybody has a use case. You, call, you talk to every function or every department, they have lots of use cases. And as you bring, collect them uh, into your pipeline of projects, there are hundreds of use cases. How, how are you able to identify high value initiatives that can deliver maximum impact right, to get this kick started? So there are very, like Declan says, there are proven methods. And easiest one or simplest one is to go for the ease of implementation and how much impact it will make. And plus, uh, how much actually you have user buying in. So I have seen when, like we do that a lot for our clients, and they will have a, somebody, some another company will come out, even there's some, some of the top uh, executive committee will come up with 200 initiatives. And these are digital initi initiatives, which very nice, like a video analytics. But is your mind ready for that ease of implementation? Do you still, still actually have a bandwidth? So you choose the low hanging fruit and prove the point and get efficiency running and your return in your money. But then in meantime, when you are running for these low hanging fruit, you actually preparing your organization for the mindset that it's okay to change, it's okay to innovate. Uh, my job is still gonna be there. Yes, my job will look different. So that's the way I'm seeing it following the approach of is to implement, easy to implement and high value to start with. Go ahead. One just quick point. We also, it's just kind of anecdote, but, um, but uh, you know, in, in mining or any industry, when you, are, you want to make an investment, you need to prove in, with numbers how this will impact operations or, and we, and sometimes uh, IT is uh, kind of hard to explain that because if, for instance, we need to, to make an investment to improve all our antennas because we are going to make a better, a, a new hardware that is get more bandwidth, how this impact operations, you know? You know, you cannot measure that. So we, had, we always had, 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 have hard time 
to try to figure or put numbers on, on how we impact, because it's, a, it's an impact that it will improve everybody's life and, and headaches, because the, the networking will go better, but we cannot say this how, how can it impact in tons minute in the, in the operations. So sometimes we have these kind of issues. Yeah. yeah, you can't quantify each benefit. Sometimes you just have to quantify them as well. Yeah. Um, so most of these projects, these companies, uh, you know, these individual mining companies can't do it on their own. Um, effective ecosystem collaboration, industry ecosystem collaboration is key to success. So how are digital platforms playing a role in improving collaboration and, and uh, cooperation between users and stakeholders? in the community, in the community of uh, the industry ecosystems. Declan. Uh, this, is, this has come up before, but the interoperability of digital data is absolutely essential. And I think that we're seeing a, a, a shift in the industry where the industry is starting to say the information on that machine does not belong to the machine supplier, it belongs to me. I want to use that information to improve my processes and to run my mind better. And I, I think that we are seeing the shift. A few years ago, all of the machine manufacturers would, were very protective of their information. More and more, that's becoming the case that they are agreeing to let some of that information out. And I think a big driver for that has been the, the Global Mining Group, what used to be the Global Mining Standards and Guidelines Group. It's a consortium of interested parties. And for those of you here who are not, your companies are not members, you should check it out. And they get together to try and introduce standards and agree on them about ways to collaborate. So they've driven an effort around getting machine data off machines so that your IT systems can integrate with whatever machines you buy, no matter who the manufacturer is. It's a new world, and things are changing, but there is a strong um, uh, Need for collaboration because no one can do it at their no one can do it on their own. Yeah. We talked about a lot of technologies, right? A lot of technologies coming our way to the mining industry, and, and obviously these technologies, as such, are proven. These are proven technologies that have successful projects in adjacent industries, whether it's oil and gas, travel and transport, um, you know, consumer industry. All these technologies have proven. The, the use cases and its effectiveness in other industries. Um, when it comes to mining, I, I'd like to get two perspectives, one from the academia and from the industry. So have mining companies started to adopt these technologies to drive digital transformation? I'll go with uh, Declan first. I think there's a lot going on in academia that gets only very slowly into the industry. I'm not going to say that that's a bad thing. I think the industry knows what they need. And every now and again, some new technology appears and it, it really takes off quite quickly because it's obviously solving a need. Um, but, you know, I think... Uh, it, it, yeah, I'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> you leave the difficult part to me. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah. So, we are living in a very beautiful time, and that's what I see most of the people struggle, that why all of a sudden so much tech emerging technology coming into our space, but, but, but because it's possible, it was not possible a few years back. And sometimes I think, especially in mining operation, we are actually over bombarded with the technology, especially when it comes to IoT devices. So it's a different debate for the different days, so I'm not gonna debate, but yeah, IoT is all over the mining operation. You go and see a mine truck operator and he is, 10 different screens, which shouldn't be, it should be a one system and we should be tracking everything. But yes, IoT is tracking every asset, every human and every process in the mine. So it's there. AI is helping to predict and condition-based monitoring is coming in. And right now what we're seeing in AI is more very simple applied analytics, but then like IBM has done it, IBM Watson is like everybody knows it's the best right now. Yeah. Right now, <laughs> and uh, we predicting with machine learning and cognitive thinking. You have seen how exploration targets are targeted, how efficiency is improving. So these things are happening around us, and it's, as I said, it, future is here. It's just not equally distributed. We are AR. I'm seeing a very good uh, application, especially in mining, and especially a very nice example actually from Hatch. I just recently joined Hatch, 
and I heard from them what they do. Each uh, digital, each mine when they design, because that's where the expertise lies, is to design a mine, especially when it's a new mine. They don't do 2D models anymore, so it's 3D model. And then when you have a 3D model, it's just creating an AR and VR environment, projecting on it, and you training your miners for simulating the training schedule and work schedule. So AR, VR playing there, plus maintenance, because they don't have to have your specialist on the site with the Vujic glass and hola lens they can actually monitor, and it's happening in day-to-day -day life. That's what I'm seeing in mind now. And blockchain is coming. DBO has played a little bit in that space, but it's still not there yet. But there are use cases where you can trick uh, your conflict minerals, your land, land registry, et cetera. But I haven't seen much coming out of it. No. But AI, VR, IoT, it's pretty much in our day-to-day -day life. Yeah. And I think I just have to reiterate, uh, from, coming from IBM, I, I must say that AI and blockchain are real in the mining industry. Uh, you know, aside from... Uh, AI implementation at Gold Corp, which is now Yumon Gold Corp, uh, and a few others. There's there's a huge pipeline of projects that we're rolling out where AI is being implemented, not just for core operational processes, but also the front office and the back office. Uh, blockchain, um, two of the world's first consortia uh, based on blockchain consortia in the mining and metals industry was uh, was brought together by by IBM, and uh, the projects have been kicked off end of last year. Um, so. Just to conclude, and before I open the floor for questions, I would say that I agree with uh, Thomas Friedman. I'm not sure um, if any of you have heard of him. Uh, he's a business commentator and a New York Times columnist. And he says we're in the midst of uh, climate change, three climate changes. Uh, it's environment, it's globalization, and it's uh, technology, right? And as we think about it, uh, you know, the world is moving from a more interconnected to a more interdependent uh, environment, right? And it is only the most adaptive uh, to change that will survive. And from my global experience, you know, working with companies such as Rio Tinto, BHP Bulletin, Norris Nickel in Russia, Vale, I would say mining companies are, are ripe for disruption with digital technologies, and they must act now because adjacent industries are looking at technology and to leverage the experience and they're using um, your experience to bring about change and create solutions for the mining industry. Um, there's a lot of pressure that the adjacent industries are undergoing due to the energy shift and sustainability. And these industries, like I said, they're looking at the mining industry to grow their revenues. Uh, we can talk about that uh, later because that is a whole new topic. Um, and also the mining industry has to attract new workforce, right? While capturing knowledge, new workforce, but at the same time capturing knowledge of their existing operations, right? And all this is leading to leveraging technology uh, to improve their business. So therefore, partnering, having the right partner for the success of your digital transformation projects is important. Um, and also to start executing chapter two of your transformation. IBM calls it the chapter two, Chapter two of digital transformation is holistic transformation beyond your operations. You know, moving from, as I said, random acts of digital, moving from digital experiments to a more holistic transformation across your enterprise that includes your operations, your, your front office, and your back office. Thank you all for your interest, and now let me open the floor for any questions. Hi, I'm Tarek Shirley from Amazon Resources. Um, interesting talk, thank you very much. Um, I was struck by um, a theme that I think came across what people were saying around um, technology disruption. Does the panel agree or disagree um, that the, the real guys who are going to accept technology quicker are likely to be the mining equipment technology services teams, the, the OEMs, and that you know, the miners are still going to be consumers of this technology, and that's probably the most rapid route to um, technology disruption. Declan, you want to take it? I think you've asked a very good question, and at the risk of offending all my friends in the industry, 
Uh, no, I don't think they are. I think the big mining equipment vendors produce what mines want. And in many cases, they actually would prefer to continue making the machines they already make because the capital is sunk, there's no need to change. So I think, if anything, the big equipment vendors are holding technology back. And I think that we might see the rise of new vendors coming in from the side and making something completely new, something unexpected, and starting off as minnows and then slowly eating the big guys for lunch. That's my, that's, that's the way I see things going. <laughs> Sorry, uh, and again, with no offenses to, to vendors, uh, I have, I've experienced that. I mean, uh, vendors, especially, you know, all traditional vendors to mining, they have these boxes, they have these products, like a box, and, and they are too comfortable with that. Their, their technicians and their, their people and their implementators are get used to this product, and then they sell them out with some kind of makeup on, the, on, on top of the thing that saying that it's, an, it's a new thing, it's an innovation, the same, the same crap they had uh, be, the always. And I'm sorry, but uh, we, we had hard times with that, you know, because then we do, you bring to, to your infrastructure a, a thing that is 10 years old, all these components are out of life and out of support, you know, and uh, we have a hard time with that. So I completely agree that the, or, or Vendors have to change, or new vendors have to come from from sideways. Sideways, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as a vendor, I'm not offended, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It is. Uh, it is happening, right? Adjacent industries that are more mature. Um, I had a conversation back in my time in Australia five years ago. Uh, the first uh, coal mining meeting that I had in in Brisbane went went and met the CEO, and he said, Max. As IBM, if you've come to talk to me about technologies uh, from the mining industry, I'm not interested. I, I'm going to end the meeting in five minutes. Um, and this gentleman um, said, I'd like to be inspired by stories from adjacent industries. And that is the reason why we have IBM in the room. Right? Technologies are proven in other industries. Right? Now, what is interestingly happening is adjacent industries that are more mature uh, are going to become the disruptors of providing more democratic, open-ended platforms that will bring more collaboration amongst the industry ecosystem players, right? And that is happening right now. Um, any more questions? Um, feel free. All right. I think uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we had a very interesting panel, good discussion, and thank you for your time, guys. Thank you. Thank you.